this is Liza and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about bullet journaling and digital bullet journaling and kind of why I have recently swapped to digital bullet journaling and also show you guys my current spreads basically. Hey, so this is editing Eliza. I did actually film this a fair while ago. Um, I think it was like the beginning of November or something. And it's now like the 13th of December as I'm editing this because I am very behind on YouTube videos. So, um, just, just so you're aware, if this is like, hold on, we're in like fucking December, what's this bitch talking about? Uh, yeah, that is, that is why. So I was in a bit of a reading journal slump or bullet journal slump. I hadn't really bullet journaled since June. I did up my set September spreads, but I never ended up really using them. I have my bullet journal right here. I did my June spreads um loved them they're heart stopper inspired obviously rainbow for pride then i did my september and like i said i never really used this i ended up filling this out at the end of the month um but i didn't really keep up with it throughout september and then here was my one attempt for my october spread which ended up not liking um I'll show you guys how that ended up on my bullet journal, my digital one. Wasn't feeling the creative mood. I hated that I had to sit down and get all of my journaling supplies out and set it up and then do the bullet journaling and then pack it all away. Otherwise it looked like a mess all the time. And like I have cups and stuff out, like pen cups that is and stuff out so that I can have the pens out that I'm currently using. But I still had to get my journal out and you know, if I needed something then I had to go hunting for it. And it was just feeling like more of a task than something that would help me be productive. Like it was hindering my productivity in a way. So I did see ages ago, this person, I can't remember who it was, on TikTok was digital bullet journaling. I'm like, hey, that's interesting because I have an iPad Pro Max with an Apple pen. I use Procreate on the weekly and I design shit for our business. So like, I'm already familiar with drawing on an iPad, you know? So I saw that on TikTok and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Kind of put that in the back of my brain. And then I said, went through this journaling slump. And then I saw someone else on Instagram, I believe it was. Again, I don't remember who it is. It was just like, I was scrolling and it popped up. Um, but I saw this person on Instagram, digital bullet journaling. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I should give that a go didn't think much more of it. And then Chloe from Books with Chloe did a video on the fact that she has changed to digital bullet journaling since she bought her iPad. And I was like, hmm, maybe that's the push I need. Maybe I should give this a go. So ended up going on Etsy and purchasing a digital download of like a bullet journal and downloading the app that Chloe was using because it looked quite interesting. And I uploaded the digital downloads to this app and like started. And the one thing that pissed me off is like, I didn't look into it like hugely, like maybe this was an option, but I couldn't find anywhere to change the flow of the pen. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like on Procreate, you can adjust the flow and say like, if you draw a line like this, instead of being jagged, it will smooth as you write. And it helps with like cursive and stuff like that. But I use that all the time like it's on the brush that I use which is the monoland brush but slightly adapted on that brush that I use as my writing brush on procreate that one it has a decent amount of that and this one didn't have that I just hated the way my writing looked because I like the way that the flowy thing like smooths it out and so I was already like this is kind of annoying like can I do this on procreate because like I'm so familiar with procreate I've got all the brushes like I've downloaded tons of brushes and I already had all that set up so I was kind of like can I swap this over to procreate so I did that editing me again hi how's it going so I've somehow lost the um screen capture like screen recording that goes along with this little bit that's coming up I don't know how that happened so I'm just gonna scrap this little bit and just like explain it without the things but basically the template that I originally downloaded I adapted that to my own color scheme because I think it was like I don't know I can't remember what color it was but I changed it to blue and like kind of adapted it a little bit like there was a book review page section and I added like um posted as one of the prompts like whether I posted it on my blog like the review um the length like the source where I got like where I got the book from the publishing year and a couple other things like just like little things to adapt it to my needs and I started populating it. I think I got up to like March um, that I populated in the like previously read bits. 
I might have filled in one or two other things, and then I completely fell off the bandwagon again when it came to journaling. So I can't remember when this was actually, when I actually did this, but it was like, must have been like September or something, because then there was a fair few weeks between, or it might have been before that, I don't know, but there was a fair few weeks between this and then when I just started my October spreads, which I will show you guys now. Then come to like towards the end of October, middle towards the end of October, and I decided to give it another go. And that is when this started. So this was my October bullet journal. This was my cover page, which is what I was trying to accomplish with that circle and a pumpkin in my art and olive journal. That didn't happen. Yeah, so I drew one of these little leaves and then I copied them and copied them everywhere. There's like some down the background, like edges and stuff. So yeah, that was my October cover page. And I kind of just went from there. I created my October reading tracker with all the little pumpkins. The pumpkins match the ones on the front page, just with a little less detail because they are just trackers. Same background, same header, just different words, obviously. Then there was my habit tracker and I love this style of habit tracker. I did use it in my bullet journal and I tell you, drawing that motherfucker was a task. And like, I love how it looks. I love everything. Same with this one, this, this type of tracker. Love how it looks. Hate, hate drawing it. Same with that tracker, like the circle ones. I like them too, but again, fucking drawing them is a pain in the ass. Yeah, there it is. Like, I like the idea, how the idea looks, but look how like wonky the lines are and stuff. And I was like trying to get everything even, but everything was not in fact even. Yeah, so that's why I ended up going back to like these ones because they're a bit easier, but I do really like the circle trackers. See, again, used one there. The awesome thing about the reading, tra um, bullet reading, oh my God, where am I going with the sentence? The digital bullet journal is I can literally just do that once. Like I went on to Pinterest, I searched to have a track, I found the one I was looking for, I traced it, and then I never have to do that again. I can just copy and paste it over to every fucking spread that I ever wanted on, and it is fabulous. So, main bonus right now. Sleep tracker, again, I drew this out once. All I have to do is copy and paste it over, change how many rows there are, depending on how many days, and I have my sleep tracker. My October favorites, again, just copy and paste it over if you want to keep it the same, which is really helpful if like, you're feeling lazy, but you want to set up the spreads because you can just copy and paste things over. And if you want to change it later, you can't, like it doesn't matter. Like it's not permanent. There's no permanency when it comes to digital bullet journaling, which I love because if I make a mistake, it doesn't fucking matter. And let's be real, I make a lot of mistakes. So yeah, anyway, so there was my weekly and then there was just my readathon um, TBR. That was October, that happened. I was happy with that. And then towards the start of November, I was like, do I want to go back to my journal or do I want to keep doing it digitally? And I decided to keep doing gingerly. Firstly, I'll show you guys my yearly spreads. So I kind of modeled this off my spreads in my journal. So we have this one, which is obviously more green, and then we have this one, but it's got the same like leaves and stuff. Same with the reading tracker, we have the vines. Then I did my 22 books in 2022, which again, based off um, the same the same as in my physical bullet journal, obviously just with the purple leaf theme that I've carried over. And then there is my book length, genre, and uh, formats and style rating track. That's what it looked like in my bullet journal. The only thing I implemented was these here. So this was based off that original digital download I purchased on Etsy, but I adapted it a little bit for what I needed. That's my current yearly spreads. Like obviously I haven't transferred every single yearly spread that was in here. There's some of them that I'm just simply not using and there's others that I just don't feel the need to transfer. Moving on to my November spread, which is my current one. I haven't actually updated this in a couple days because I've been busy, but my, firstly, I drew a stack of books. I chose a color scheme, drew a stack of books. I chucked a quote in there. I didn't have to write it, which I love because I hate my handwriting, used a font. And also my favorite thing is not having to write out the calendars, like this calendar thing here. Didn't have to write that out because I just went onto Canva, searched November 2022 calendar, found one that started with Saturday, a uh, Sunday, because that's my preferred method, and downloaded it, bought it over, alpha locked it, height colored it in whatever color I wanted, and fucking called it a day. So I didn't have to write out all those numbers and get the spacing right or anything like that. So next, 
I drew a bookshelf for my reading tracker and I covered it with plants and I love it. We have all the books. Um, I have my key down the bottom to what color they are. I chucked my font in the top, added my plants, habit tracker. All I did was pull the habit tracker from last month, I added a quote in the bottom, pulled the book stack from the first page, pulled that monstera from the third, second page, put it on top of the books. Sleep tracker, I pulled the entire bookshelf. I colored in the rest of the books, obviously, to make it look pretty. Chucked another quote in there. Love it. My favorites, obviously I haven't filled this out because it's not the end of the month yet, but again, I pulled that same monstera and the books. My TBR, pulled the same monstera. I only have to draw it once. And my weeklies, these are all exactly the same, so just a quick glance of what they look like. There you go. I am really happy with digital bullet journal. Like everything that was hindering me from physically journaling does not exist when it comes to bullet journaling. Let me, I don't have to get my stuff out. Like I can literally lay in this chair. All I need is my iPad, the Apple pen, which is in the case and power cord. <laughs> If it's flat, I don't need anything else. I can do it anywhere. I can lay in bed and do it. I can do it here. It doesn't matter. Whereas when I was bullet journaling, it, yeah, you couldn't do it anywhere. Like I had to kind of be at my desk or at a table or somewhere where you've got like a solid surface and you had to get everything out or you had to carry on a pencil case, um, plus the book and like, I just kicked the tripod. And yeah, like I said, it was just becoming a hindrance to my productivity. Whereas I feel like on this, um, it's not. And if you think digital bullet journaling is cheating, you're the same type of people that think digital art is cheating and you can get fucked. Digital art is an art form. There is no difference to using digital art than using any other art form. You still have to master it. You can't just go on there and like, it does everything for you. You still have to learn how to use it. Cause I can tell you my first drawings, don't even go there. I kind of recommend giving it a go, like even just once. And it's funny cause I literally purchased just recently the two art journal of journals that I planned on using next year. Yeah, <laughs> I'll use them for something. I was thinking maybe using them more as like a scrapbook type, like memories thing, because then I can sit down when I have the time and do like a single spread based on like somewhere I went or something I did. So I think that's what I might use it for. Just kind of use it as a document of what I'm doing and then I can still print out photos and everything like that. But for the moment, digital is what's working for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll probably do some more videos as I do more spreads and I'll definitely do a video setting up my 2023 digital bullet journal. But anyways, let me know how what your thoughts on bullet journaling are and whether you would consider trying digital bullet journaling. Not necessarily like taking it up, but like just giving it a go. Yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.